beauty with brains this phrase should be immediately censored because beauty and brains coexist and today you will agree with me hello you're watching apn news and this is shruti kaushal today we have with us two strong headed women who are not only inspiring young women to dream big but also helping them to change the world meet mrs india exquisite 2015 and also mrs exquisite international 2015 uh, shreya siddharth shah and we also have with us the founder of the beauty pageant organization india exquisite ms rajni subha very warm welcome to both of you thank you shreya i'll start with you your journey has been really inspiring you are not only a beauty pageant winner but also a breastfeeding consultant a childbirth educator and also a social media influencer so how modeling came into the picture actually it came into the picture because of rejection so so many times we say that the rejections will keep coming in your life but for me it was a blessing approximately when my in-laws side 40 people saw me for the first time they rejected me at one go because of my looks and they were like no we should not get our son married to a girl who looks like so ordinary from inside beauty was there but external somehow i didn't never worked on it and then life kept rolling a basic looks were taken care of mm. i had my two kids and i expressed my desire to my mother in law that i wish to take part in a beauty pageant and she was like it's okay but i have heard lot many wrong things Right. happening and somehow for they being a local people whatever they could hear with news and whatsapp and all of these things and she was like okay i'll come with you i'll be assured with where you are being trained or what all is there right. and then we'll see her so we went to tiara pageant training studio where ritika ramantri ma'am was there and she told first time ever in my career a mother in law has come with daughter in law to understand things about beauty pageant and she was like see there is this side to the industry and there is that side to exactly, industry yeah. as well so be assured she is safe and she can actually help many women to be to get inspired in life so let her do that and then my journey started so you just said ki you have been rejected by so many people uh, your marriage proposals and all Did you feel that low steam, self esteem? That you know it's now time, high time to work on your looks. And did you at any point feel that you know looks is something, looks are something which is important rather than the internal beauty? See, the best part was confidence was always there. So somehow because of looks, that was never a hit. And my husband has liked me with those ordinary looks. So he will always tell me, I like you as it is. Why you bothered about it? So I've never been bothered about it. But after coming into this file, I realized the cake is already there, but cherry will complement it. Right, right. So I did not worked on my looks as a need. I actually worked on it as a complement to what I already have. That's really great. And how supportive is your husband? Oh, okay. <laughs> By the way, I call him a friend for a lifetime. He is the one who will celebrate my success, my achievement, as much as probably more than what I will celebrate. I will cherish. And second one is my mother-in-law, who has been an amazing support system. We stay in a four-generation house, and somehow they all will look forward to my what next you are doing, what next you are doing. So I think it's entire family, and having a husband who is very supportive is extremely helpful. Even today I am here. my kids are having their exams and husband is taking care of them. so how do you balance this work life thing to be very very honest entire credit goes to family so having a wonderful family and my family says it's not about only about having a family it's about having a girl who desire to make a difference so some of i had a desire they gave the support and that combination helped me to achieve anything in life so you both have been a uh, history i mean you guys have history you met earlier and you were telling me that you guys have that bond and also you guys encouraged each other right and uh, helped each other to be whatever you are today so tell me about that experience see for me rajni ma'am came in picture as an accident 
Okay. Uh, my training was still going on with Ritika ma'am and uh, uh, Ritika ma'am just shared there's an opportunity, there's a pageant, uh, India Exquisite pageant and they have their first season. So I think you will be a right girl to go and participate there. And then my first question was, uh, do I have to do body showing? or what the money what will be involved in this entire thing or is it something that uh, somebody will buy the crown mm -hmm, and right. with all of that one line that she told about her is that be sure about honesty and loyalty towards what's been offered and I think that's something actually hit me that because those values matters to me a lot right, and right. then I was like I'll talk to her once and then take a decision I had a word with her and not even a single sentence she told, you have to change yourself. She was always like, be your best, give your best and then you shall accept with lot of grace with whatever comes your way. And that day I took a decision that I'm taking part in India Exquisite Pageant. And what was your experience in the beauty pageant? Okay, I'll tell you a few things mm -hmm. were shocking, okay. few things were surprising and few things I never expected in the entire mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. So. With what thought actually we go for a pageant? Okay, there will be few people, they will make us walk. Yeah, right. Uh, right. They will do the trial. They will ensure that uh, uh, we all are absolutely off for the stage. Mm -hmm, but they offered us many more. There were lifestyle skill class. There were morning fitness class. Uh, then she ensured that every time she was there with us to tell us that I have been through this experience. What you're feeling, I can understand. You all are raw and that's actually your strength, not your weakness. So don't think like that, okay, I'm doing it for the first time. You don't have to think about all these things. Right, right. And that was very, very good. And you should know, Shruti, that final day when we were actually there on the stage, people, celebrities were there around us. Mm -hmm. Few of them were actually trained us for the last three to four days. Unknowingly, everything happened. And our looks, our dresses, she was there to wish us, she was there mm -hmm. to tell okay, cool down, take a deep <laughs> breath, walk. And she didn't made us feel as if we are a third party coming from somewhere outside. She made us feel like a family. And I didn't expect this from a... So they were professionally homely. There was very beautiful combination. Oh, so sweet. <laughs> and that's what actually made me connect to them so well. So you have had an amazing transformation uh, by look wise. So how that experience has been for you? Was it traumatizing or was it a life changing experience? I think it was life changing in many ways. Uh, can I share about my finale question? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. My, uh, one of the questions that was asked by judges was, uh, who is your biggest strength in life? And I mm -hmm. was, it's my husband. And they were like, if your husband divorces you tonight, what will be your reaction? And I was like, I'll sign the document without even asking why he's asking for it. They're like, why you will not even ask for a reason? I said, the very fact he's asking for a divorce, that means he loves someone or somebody more than me. Yeah. yeah. And I love him so much that I'll sign it without asking for it. That's really and selfless. And it was a life changing moment for me. And my husband told, is it true? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I truly live by it. Uh -huh. And I'm so sure about it. So it's been life changing in many ways. But one thing that I would love to tell viewers as well that when something good happens in our life, somehow ensure that you talk about it. Because right. good gets talked, more good happens in life. Right, right. And same year I became a social media influencer. I started YouTube channel after the pageant. And today, with the name Mayadwaja, we have like 1.25 lakh expecting mothers, new mothers following. And I'm able to make a difference. Okay, what is the significance of your uh, YouTube channel's name? Mayadwaja? Yeah. Okay, Dwaja is being reborn. Oh. And in Indian culture, they say being a mother is reborn as a mother. So, so first it was Dwaja. Mm -hmm. Then my husband was like, mine or another female rebirth can never be seen. So it's my dvija, a personalized experience. It's really deep. Thank it's really so deep. So my next question is for both of you. You know, empowerment is a strong word, but uh, now it is being used very lightly. And young women, they, they need a guide 
in their life who can guide them and tell them the real meaning of feminism also not just pseudo feminism <laughs> right so do you think that uh, young women need to know that empowerment is not only uh, about you know fighting for uh, equal wages and all it's, it's more like life transforming and self development do you feel that i feel it 100% because empowerment can be seen the way others are seeing it and it can be seen other way around also it depends on what you are trying to achieve out of it right if somebody feels being a rebel is feminism mm -hmm. might be that's what they're trying to achieve mm -hmm. for personally for me feminism is basically helping other female right. to be best version of themselves right right and uh, success as it is gets defined and it's different from person to person So for me, if I can help few more girls to feel more confident, confident in life, right. that's what is for me being a true feminine. True feminism is for me. It's defined in those words. Can I help few more to feel more confident? Right, right. What about you, ma'am? See, I can't agree more to what my queen just mentioned. It, you know, <laughs> <laughs> queen's word, and I, I thoroughly say like, yeah, I totally agree to that. And yes, it's uh, empowerment. It has to come from within. a girl needs to be confident mm -hmm. that confidence itself is empowerment and the first thing that should be taught to a girl as a child is being confident about who she is right. in whatever color she is in whatever you know size she is she should be made to understand that clothings are you know just something to cover up yourself just to add an edge to the confidence that you already do have and this thing i think you know can be infused in a girl child by her mother only yeah right it's beautiful a I strong see. parenting is the need of the hour that's what i feel so because there are so many girls who look beautiful in the outfits that they wear but then what they lack is that confidence, confidence right. so whatever you know a uh, prizely dress or like any outfit that you wear if you don't have that confidence you will never shine through and to shine through to make the girl as bright as the star mm -hmm. a mother's role is vital and for that the mother should be empowered she should be confident who can give birth to a confident child Lovely. when i look at my queen she has two daughters <laughs> and both her daughters are doing awesome in academics in uh, social uh, cultural activities you mention it in even in sports, sports yeah. let us hear about your daughter also shreya in yeah. all these years yeah. you know <laughs> what they are doing <laughs> it's actually <laughs> truth what she said the parenting role is so crucial and i was asking my husband how do we parent both the daughters my elder one is 12 younger one is 8 okay. and he was like it's very simple be what you want them to be right and my elder one is a national player she does a sport called as slalom which is freestyle skating and my younger one is a state level player they, bo they both play musical instruments banjo synthesizer <laughs> drums amazing <laughs> uh, they speak four languages very fluently and something that has been their strength is confidence mm. recently they gave their hair off at tirupati mm. and they were roaming around like this and i asked them did anybody teased you mama that's their problem Hmm. We are so happy. We don't have to spend time in combing our hair. Yeah, this maturity at such a young age yeah. is. Yes. Exactly. And I think that's beautiful. And second, being their strength, what Ma'am told that they should have an openness to communicate anything and everything within family. Hmm. Right. And I so enjoyed it. Be it puberty or be it anything that they go through at their work, uh, at the school or at the sports place. they are equally free in fact little more free to talk to their father about it so first they'll be let me talk to papa and then i'll come and talk to you <laughs> so i think that plays an extremely important role what mom uh, what ma'am said because there was a time we were parented by only mother mm, right today is a time where fathers are almost equally involved in parenting so if we both come on the same yeah. page and then take an action it'll be always be wonderful that's really great thank you Ma'am, you have uh, organized several beauty pageant, and what is that? 
I mean, young women especially, they go through a lot of struggles, especially girls from middle class family. There is taboo that, you know, like you said, That's fashion is all about uh, skin showing and all that. So what are those common struggles that young women uh, go through? See, uh, when it comes to beauty, we talk about the overall, you know, well-being of the individual. So when we talk about the overall well-being, that mm -hmm. counts the fitness also. Apart right. from having a high, you know, intelligence quotient, mm -hmm. we also want them to be very fit. So how do we judge a girl who is fit or not? We simply can't make them, you know, uh, do certain activities to check their fitness. We have to see in what, you know, uh, uh, measurements they are in. Right. What is their, you know, like uh, um, sizes and the fitness level is only, you know, checked when they are in the bikinis. Right, right. But bikini, the moment we utter the word bikini, it tends to become, you know, a very hush hush That's word right, right. in the, you know, a circle which is like, yeah, of course, I would mention that, you know, um, in the lower strata. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, of course, in uh, certain uh, provinces of India, like uh, the bit, uh, some of the states, which yeah. are a bit, uh, you yeah, know, so that's true. Tier and third tier. Yes, right. exactly. Yeah. Right. So then uh, what happens is the parents are not so willing. So mm -hmm. the girls, they come and they say that uh, we really want to participate. But then like, uh, ma'am, you shouldn't be posting this. You shouldn't be posting that. Right. But then I tell them one thing. See, the day you win the national here, you're going to represent the country internationally. That's mm -hmm. true. And bikini does not mean that you are trying to show off your skin. Mm -hmm. It's all about how fit you are and how confident, confident you are. Yeah. Again, the word confidence comes here. <laughs> I really emphasize on the word confidence because that is the only thing that takes you places. Right. So basically what happens in middle class family, uh, parents are not only, uh, they are worried about not their da da daughters being, you know, harassed or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's like what will relatives say, say, right? Exactly. So, <laughs> how should they deal with that? I think dealing is. Um, see, I also come from a you know a place uh, in Bengal mm -hmm. from Kalimpong. Okay. I was born and raised in Bhutan, though, mm -hmm. and uh, but then of course my families, my relatives, they are still there, and of course my mother also. She had told me these words, you know, what will the relatives say? <laughs> what will uh, this and that will say? I used to tell her one thing. I'm going so vocal on the national channel. <laughs> <laughs> I used to say, if anybody has ever helped me and has ever asked me if I have rice in my house, if I have oil sufficient in the kitchen, That's true. and if there is salt in my place, they don't have the right to question me or raise a finger at me. That's I beautiful. told my mother this. So till the date, I tell this to everybody. I tell the girls also, see, you have to be confident. You have to like be sure about where you want to go, where you want to venture, where you want to tread your foot upon. I tell the girls. So there are, you know, I don't take very uh, formal classes with the, you know, a finalist. But of course, I just sit with them, you know. But then like, of course, I tell them all my experiences only. Because what happens is, um, if you go through the books, if you try to narrate something that you have read about, I don't think that will make an impact. That's true. I believe in looking into the eyes and sharing my stories, which were, of course, you know, with lots of ups and downs. Being a woman in India, I, exactly. you know, I know you can relate that. <laughs> yeah. In fact, uh, I can add to this what ma'am said that lo kya bolenge, it itself has been there right from childhood. Mm. You have to wind up your toys back just because guests are coming. If you don't do it, what people will say? Right. So, to, right, they will tell you are a bad girl. You don't even know how to put your toys back to its place. Yeah. So, when my any family member tell my kids, uh, guests are coming, so keep everything at its place. Yeah. I'll go there and tell my kids, you should keep things at its place because it's a good habit for you. Right. Exactly. People will, as it is, say and as it is. Say. So, True. there was a beautiful line by R. J. Karthik. Logo ke baare mein zada mat sochna. Log amrut kharidte hai aur poochte hai meetha hai kya? Aur fir namak aur chutney dal ke khate hai. So it actually goes like exactly. that. <laughs> so Shreya, you are working towards women's health, and you are so vocal about it on your social media. 
and you're also a childbirth educator. So do you think in India, uh, especially after pregnancy, women's health is compromised? Because once the baby comes in the family, people are busy about taking care of the baby and they right. neglect the women's health. So what do you have to say about that? It's a huge taboo. In fact, after pregnancy, the entire thing is you should eat, not for you only, you should eat so that baby will get good milk. So somehow entire focus shifts from a woman to child. And she, in this entire process, she forgets, I still exist and my life is not only my child. So I need to tell all the women who are watching this, especially because it's a national platform that we have to take care of ourselves. So my child is important, my husband is important, my family is important, but I can only take care of all of them if I am fit enough to take care of them. Right. And I will not even enter my kitchen unless I, unless I have finished my fitness and my meditation in the morning. So I know that 7 o'clock I have to go to kitchen, 5 o'clock get up, read book, do exercise, ensure that you eat well full day, you have fruits. So there are a lot of women who will do salads, fruits to their right, family, right. but they'll be like, I'll eat the leftover. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. There are many of the times I'll pick up the best and my mother will say, you're eating the best, you're not yeah. keeping it for kids. <laughs> I said, no, you know, I like that best, so I'll be eating that. <laughs> and that attitude somehow we have to develop that I am also important. Right, and that's right. important. And the lastly, the field in which I am working, somehow the, the society judges a woman how good so-called she is right. by understanding how good breast milk she can produce, how, what is the weight of her child, if she is able to make her child quiet in public, but that doesn't define a mother. A mother is far beyond what you can see. Exactly. There are sleepless nights, she has, she has changed her shape and size to bring that little angel out and she is doing what best she can do as it is. So for that reason every woman should be respected herself as well and to others as well. I truly agree. Thank you. You have also represented India internationally. Yes. So what was your experience there? It, it was grand. Firstly I will tell you at Delhi India exquisite pageant was an absolute grand and then we went there it was a lovely experience. We were not judged on our shape, size, colour. But the best part, I'll tell you, Shruti, that you're recognised as India when you go internationally. So they no, never they told us, Shreya, can you please come two steps ahead? They'll always tell, India, come two steps ahead. I think that feel yeah, we it's can... Loud moment. It's a lovely moment that there are many of them will build their opinion about India with what they see me. Right. So the way I walk, talk, not to impress anybody, just because I represent my country at that moment. So it was a lovely experience, that limo ride, a lot of experiences they added to create it an amazing memory. And she's been in every moment with us there and she was like, live it as a moment, live it as a lifetime moment because you can cherish it later. So that was an amazing experience. Then from there it took like seven years. And after winning the first year, I had been a judge, I've inaugurated events, I've been there with a lot of politicians, influencers in my state. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you the count, 63 events within an year I was part of after winning a pageant. That's huge. That was huge. I've been interviewed, I've been there on TV, news channels, it's been a lovely experience. And then after seven years, yesterday I participated in India Style Fashion Week 2022 as a showstopper. And ma'am just called up and said, I want to see my queen on stage. <laughs> and today I'm there on a national TV um, for an interview yeah. and it's an honor. Thank you so much ma'am. <laughs> Would love to be loud enough to tell you all people to give an opportunity and to her to still remember that you are still my queen. So thank you so much. So my last question would be from both of you. Yes, yes please. That one advice you would like to give all young women out there. I think um, it's just not wearing the physical crown on your head. Every girl should have that invisible crown on their head so that they always hold their head high and chin up and walk. 
beautiful. What about you, sir? Oh, for me, my teacher Mahatriya says this line with which I have been living: In life, you do not get what you desire; you will only get what you deserve. And the path needs consistent, directed, self-motivated, intelligent efforts. So, as a woman, in short, there is nothing called as she is lucky enough to get it. <laughs> it right. just she has put in those steps to actually reach there so and never she deserves it she deserves it yeah. so never see anybody's results always get inspired with their journey to get those results thank you so much both of you for joining it it has been lovely speaking to both of you thank, thank you, you so, so much, much. thank you shruti thank, thank you ma'am thank you so that was all for today you were watching ap news this is shruti kaushik <laughs>